Welcome back to Rusted Junk Garage. Well, we finally finished the 96 Kawasaki KLR. So let's take a minute, walk around it. I'll show you what I did and tell you how much it costs for this project. Well, there's a shot of the 96 KLR. Let's start up at the front here and we'll talk about what we did to this motorcycle. I came across this uh, motorcycle on a website called OfferUp. I was kind of looking around for one, uh, not real hard. Uh, I kind of say this one found me. Anyway, we started with the uh, front tire here. And this is a Metzler Tourang tire. It's probably a 70-30 tire, I'm going to call it. 70% road, 30% off-road. If you were going to do some aggressive off-roading, this wouldn't be the tire for you. <clears throat> we replaced the front brakes. They were down. We took both forks off of this thing. The fork boots that were on it were the original ones and they were torn. So we put in brand new uh, springs in the front end. They are a progressive suspension spring. These went in there and those are the ones that came out of there. So we put in the better springs in the front end, changed the fork oil and added the new boots to that. <clears throat> Up here, we added two two-inch, they're an amber-colored LED uh, running light to the, the crash bar up here. It's got some decent mounts. And I went with the smaller two-inch because I still wanted uh, the turn signals visible. Anything bigger, it would have blocked those. So we went with that. <clears throat> Going down the side here, this is uh, Dirt Tracks. Uh, crash bar. It's a full crash bar, protects your radiator, your engine. It has, it's actually three pieces. This piece, one just like it on the other side. And then the, the front piece that mounts your uh, <clears throat> running lights and protects your headlight and, and fairing and stuff like that. So uh, pretty good. Mounts two bolts down here that go through the front engine mount. And then on each side, it's got the bolt that goes here into the, the rear frame. So it's, uh, it's pretty solid. Uh, I looked at a number of different ones and kind of decided on this one. Uh, it's a pretty good fit. You know, these are designed to fit uh, 87 through 2007. So there was, you know, there is some differences in the fairing and stuff like that on them, but it, they work pretty darn good. Uh, down here, we changed out the uh, foot pegs to a tusk, a wider peg, where it's got the nice cleats and stuff on it there to hold your feet and gives you a little bigger platform. And we went with the tusk shifter, uh, a little more heavy duty and it moves the shifter about 10 millimeters forward so I can get my 13 inch foot under there. Up here, the petcock, uh, we took the petcock apart, made sure everything was good in there. New fuel lines, new fuel filter, and clamps on it. <clears throat> this front case uh, protector here, it was missing. I sourced this out of uh, a motorcycle, I guess he's kind of a motorcycle salvage dealer. He was down in Washougal, Washington, which is, I think it's only about 75 miles south of here. <clears throat> so we got that. It wasn't too hard to find. It was missing also the side battery cover, and I just got that today. I found a new one. Had to do some modifications because there is quite a few connect additional connections on the battery there. So that's all in and that looks so much better because the other battery, I mean, it's white and it just didn't look right. So 
that's in there with a little bit of adjustment to this bottom bracket to to make that work <clears throat> uh this chain guide down here it, it was not on the bike but it did come with the bike so got that back on the chain adjusted and all oiled up the bike came with a uh, corbin seat this is an aftermarket seat they, they're a pretty expensive seat this one has been on there for a while there is a couple little marks on it i haven't rode on it yet so We'll see how I like that. <clears throat> Back here is the tool pouch and the factory tools are all in there, every one of them. That's a little unusual to see all the factory tools still in the uh, plastic case. So anyway, up here where the business goes on, uh, the mirrors were on the bike. I don't know if these are original mirrors. It does have the <coughs> Acer Biss guards here on it and the fellow that owned it before me he put these green grips on not real excited about those but they'll do for now i did add new uh, clutch lever and brake lever those are tusk made by tusk um, cell phone navigation mount here which is works uh, pretty good just pop that like that Pull that down, and your phone's out, and back in, and locked. Uh, the front running lights, this is the switch for those, and all the wiring is down in here. You can see the relay, that's where I'm on it, and I tried four or five different places, but that, that worked the best there, so flip those on, and it's illuminated, and those come on, and I'm not going to be doing any right or night riding. These are more for, you know, being seen. So, an additional mount for whatever else you want to put a navigation system or something like that. GoPro mount, GoPro Hero 8 mounted up there. And of course, your standard tack, temperature gauge, your speedo, and the odometer. This bike's got 20,433 miles on it and your ignition switch uh, locking gas cap and my uh, usb port um, actually i don't know if you can see that but it's just it's it's a battery tender uh, they make one and i just zip tied that to the risers and i did put in a three quarter inch riser on the handlebars so it brings them a little bit closer to you uh, kawasaki uh, tank bag, you can get lots of goodies in there that you want to get to uh, quickly when you're out on the road. Uh, they say these are a six gallon gas tank. I guess that's what it is, which is pretty good. It's water cooled, um, one cylinder, 652 cc's with the five speed transmission on it. Uh, back here, the bike came with these. These are Happy Trails Panniers is what they call them. Uh, there's a couple different ways to pronounce that. I don't know which is the correct way, but they do offer lots of uh, lots of storage for you, and they're very easy to take on and off. It's just these two thumb screws here come off, and the bag literally just just lifts off. And they have locks front and back on both of them and there's a padlock for each one helmet uh, lock storage lock on the side there so when you leave your helmet and lock it and got some other hooks here and and rack on top for additional luggage and stuff like that got the some rusted junk swag on there how neat is that and the uh, brace goes all the way across the back and these are kind of side protectors when the the bags aren't on this is stock this is uh come with the kawasaki so that's all good tire on the back is again a metzler uh, the original owner or the owner put that one on and he never did put the front one on so i put the front one so they're a matching set i bought brakes for the rear um, the pads were about 80%, so I didn't replace the rear brakes. 
Uh, I'm going to run them a little while longer and see how they do. Um, the exhaust here is an aftermarket exhaust. Whose it is, I have no idea. Um, you save some weight off the uh, factory exhaust. The factory exhaust in these are real restrictive and real heavy, so that was on the on the bike there too. Coming around this side, <clears throat> um, again, the Tusk foot pegs, which are real nice. There is a an option to lower these down about another inch and a half, and I think I'm going to do that. Once I get it out, ride it a little bit, I'll decide on that for sure. Uh, the heat shield. <clears throat> The heat shield on the bike was missing when I bought it, and so I found this one and a complete head pipe. Uh, it came from, God, somewhere on the East Coast, and it was awful rusty, and I went through the process of, of cleaning the rust off of this, and I did a video on that, and I'll put that in the description if you care to see that. Uh, when I bought the bike, it had uh, one of them Chinese knockoff carbs on it, and the guy uh, still had the original carburetor. So I took this one, put a rebuild kit in it, uh, all new jets, needles, seat, gaskets. Uh, <clears throat> your fuel mixture screw is normally up in here. And, and Kawasaki put a like an aluminum plug in there so you couldn't fiddle with it. Well, I took that out and this is a longer one with a little hand wheel so there is an adjustment. And the, the difference with this is when you have the screw on the engine side of the carburetor, it's a fuel adjustment screw. And if your screw is back here on this side, it's an air adjustment screw. So this is a, a fuel adjustment screw. Uh, this is your idle, how to set that. So all new parts, like I said, needle seat and everything in the carb is good to go. Check the float with the there level on the float. So we're good to go there. Uh, this is a factory skid plate. It's a hard plastic. I did add <clears throat> the low profile drain plug. The factory drain plug actually hangs a little bit below this. So not real good for off-roading. So I put in that low profile drain plug when I changed the, the oil and filter in this. It does have the center stand in it, plus the side stand, and it's a little bit of a chore to get up on that center stand, especially on a smooth surface like the garage. So that's why I put this little piece of roofing down here to see if I can get a little better traction to, to get that up there. So there is what we did uh, with this bike in the last month. It's kind of been a fun project, tinkering around these these are pretty darn easy to work on. Um, the plastics are all in pretty decent shape. There is some fading here. I did some to work on them to kind of clean them up a little bit. Uh, the windshield is, is an aftermarket. It's an extended one. Uh, he gave me some paperwork, and I can't remember who the manufacturer of this is, but it was about 100 and 28 bucks for that windshield whenever they bought it. So <clears throat> there's a look at the 96 Kawasaki KLR 650. So we've got it ready for some adventures this summer, I think. Um, uh, this pretty low budget. Um, the bike was $1,400. Uh, it was about $170 for the tax and registration on the thing and all the parts pieces and hardware and stuff that i added even the cost of i rented a little u-haul trailer to get it the cost of that to to get it back here uh, <clears throat> in this bike i have twenty four hundred and seventy seven dollars and fifty two cents the knockoff Chinese carb I sold for $45 so I have $24.32.52 total in this bike uh, like I said that's everything I've spent plus some other expenses like the trailer and stuff to get it I do have a utility trailer but <clears throat> I don't have a motorcycle wheel chalk 
in that yet. I'm going to put one in. I would have used my trailer, but it was at the other Shelton house, and it would, it would cost me more in fuel to go get the trailer than to go to U-Haul here for 25 bucks. So that's what I did. So there it is. $2,432 for something that I think is ready to go on some adventures and enjoy. I don't know what these things are, are worth. Uh, if you look on uh, Craigslist or eBay Marketplace, you know, uh, they, they'll run 25, three grand, 3,500. I don't know. <clears throat> if you go to buy these Happy Trails bags today with the mounting brackets and stuff, I mean, those are like $750 alone, so. Uh, your crash bar and stuff, you, you know, I've got like $278 in that. And then, you know, the lighting and every other little thing I did. So there's how we stand. So thanks for joining us today. I wanted to run you around the KLR 650, show you what we did, and tell you how much it costs to build this. So again, we always appreciate you watching, commenting, and we'll catch you on the next one.